harbor dark recesses of violence and horror. I'm just a man hiding in the corner with a camera. I had just turned three when a low-budget thriller by an A-list filmmaker was screened in New York City. Shirley Ulmer Sipes, part of Hollywood royalty, a friend and instructor at Sherwood Oaks Experimental College, brought Peter Bogdanovich to speak to our class. Back in the 60s, he was a film critic and among the first to see Psycho. Nothing like it had ever been unleashed on audiences before, and his initial response was anger. How dare this filmmaker make a movie so manipulative and terrifying? It inspired his first film, Targets, about another psychopath who murdered innocents with a high-powered rifle at a drive-in showing a horror film. This is SMO, and I have a thing about Psycho. Psycho has become one of the most recognizable films in cinema history. It's not like there weren't other movies about perverted killers and mass murderers. Or even thrillers riddled with death and violent murder. One of the best of them was a black and white French thriller by the same writers who later wrote Hitchcock's Vertigo. Hitchcock had just scored the biggest hit of his career with North by Northwest, but he felt it was time to take a creative risk. Mr. Hitchcock, you're the most famous director in the history of the medium, but you're 60 years old. Shouldn't you just quit while you're ahead? He's going out of his mind looking for his next project. I need something fresh, something different. Hitchcock finally found something different in the story of America's first documented psychopathic killer, Ed Gein. He was a man that dug up his dead mother and made utilities out of human corpses. His exploits inspired a best-selling novel by Pulp Fiction master Robert Bloch. No one respects the name Hitchcock more than Paramount, but even a talented man sometimes backs the wrong oars. This is Mr. Hitchcock's next film. Fine, if you can get the money. Who do I make it out to? Hitchcock's budget was $807,000. Janet Lee was paid a quarter of her usual fee, and Anthony Perkins' salary happened to be the same amount of money Marion Crane stole from the bank. Hitchcock used the crew from his television series at a cost of $62,000. The film proved the manipulative power of George Tomasini's editing. Oh, you imp, you've got nudity in there. They got away with a lot. Just look closely. And then there was Bernard Herrmann's music. He and Hitchcock had a successful working relationship for many years. I do not want music over the Shah murder scene. But what Alma and I talked about is really going to play. Bernie, this is not Vertigo. It's not a romantic movie. Since Psycho was in black and white, Bernard was inspired to try something a little different. He was going to compose a minimalist, modernist score that was an extreme musical experiment for an audience unfamiliar with serialism while reinventing the string section. He gave us the most terrifying music cue in movie history with that shower scene. Hitchcock was so pleased with the score that he doubled Bernard Herrmann's salary at $34,501. This is Alfred Hitchcock. Having lived with Psycho since it was a gleam in my camera's eye, I now exercise my parental rights in revealing a number of significant facts about this slightly extraordinary entertainment. Theater managers were instructed, at the risk of their lives, not to admit to the theater any persons after the picture started. Any attempts to enter by side doors, fire escapes, or ventilating shafts <laughs> would be met by force. How does it end? I promised mother I wouldn't tell. The selling of the film was unique and has been imitated since. Hitchcock made a trailer in the form of a short film that didn't show a single frame of the actual motion picture. Good afternoon. He could get away with it because he was already a familiar face on television. 
and the trailer capitalized on that celebrity. Good evening. Do you believe in ghosts? Of course not. I knew you didn't. Noise is the mortal enemy of good motion picture making. That is why I hired this particular house. It is deathly quiet. Most of the time. In that window on the second floor, the single one in front, that's where the woman was first seen. You see, even in daylight, this place still looks a bit sinister. When I finally visited the place, it was still every bit as sinister. But my first experience with this movie happened when I was seven. I wasn't aware of Hitchcock, but as the guy on TV that regularly brought murder into our home. I had seen the ads and thought it was a dirty movie. Our parents had gone to see Goldfinger, and the babysitter they hired to watch us had plans to sneak out to see this more controversial film. I was thinking sex. The opening. Sex. Running away to a motel. Sex. Norman peeking as Marion showered. Sex. The next thing I knew, there was an old lady brandishing a foot-long butcher's knife. See it uncut, intact. After moving to Los Angeles, a friend and I attended a movie festival known as Filmax, specifically the Scared to Death three-day horror marathon. It was there I saw a version of Psycho that made me drop my jaw once again. CBS announced that it was postponing its original broadcast of Psycho following the murder of a 21-year-old girl in Chicago the day before. Robert Block had continued success as a writer. He even wrote sequels to his most famous novel, none of which were filmed. It was 22 years later when Psycho finally got its first sequel from a director who had early interviewed the master. The third in the new franchise was directed by Norman himself, Anthony Perkins. The follow-up made for Showtime was directed by Master of Horror, Mick Garris. There was a new television series that failed, followed by a more successful one with the same name. It has also been remade shot for shot by Gus Van Zandt. And there was a film made about the making of this movie. In 1992, the Library of Congress deemed the film culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant and had it preserved in the National Film Registry. Today, even those who haven't seen Psycho are familiar with its infamous shower scene. Why are you in my bathroom? After all, it's become a pop culture touchstone and has been parodied countless times in movies and television. That kid gets no tip.
William Castle, a well-known horror filmmaker, continued the bandwagon in America by paying homage to Psycho and its PR technique over and over again. to the point of getting an actual transvestite to portray one of his killers. He even started working with screenplays written by psycho scribe Master Block. And created his own equivalent of the shower murder. Over in England, Hammer Films, the studio that reinvigorated the horror genre, created their own psycho knockoffs. Many were quite shocking. In Europe, the giallo genre went riot. But they weren't being gory with their kills, only realistic. And this gave birth to the slasher genre. There was a film inspired by Ed Gein himself. And there was one that starred the daughter of Janet Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis. There was the slasher that haunted Crystal Lake and the one that haunted your dreams. And Brian De Palma showed that only he could do Psycho better than anyone. And there were a myriad of others. The massacre continued. There were even films about Ed Gein himself. One from Alan Ormsby, a cult icon. Another starred Kane Hodder, a.k.a. Jason from Friday the 13th. And then this one was Steve Railsback, an actor who had earlier played Charles Manson. Let us not forget this Oscar-winning gem. Psycho is cinema as art that still works to this day. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Actress and Best Director. Hitchcock used to always complain that it was getting harder and harder to scare audiences. You only have to watch the news to see why. Soon, the uncensored version will be made available to the public. So I will celebrate by further honoring the creators of this classic and adopt a new Hollywood tradition by ending this video with my version of the opening credits. Excelsior, and keep it surreal. Well, they've cleaned all this up now. Big difference. You should have seen the blood. The whole, the whole place was... Well, it's, it's too horrible to describe. Dreadful. And I'll tell you, there's a very important clue was found here. Down there. Well, the murderer, you see, crept in here. Very slowly, of course, the shower was on. There was no sound. And uh, 